Hello everybody and welcome back to the painting portal. My name is Emma Stroll, your host, and today we are going to be jumping right into another piece in my Alice in Wonderland themed series, um, the Father Time piece. I love this piece, you guys. I'm not gonna lie. I think I think it's really cool. I really like the shading. I can get in I'll get into everything once we hop into the time lapse, but yeah, I, I really like how it came out. I feel like it's very versatile and it can stand on its own very well. So, yeah. Um, this was inspired by the character um, Father Time from Through the Looking Glass. And, um, yeah, so let's hop right into it. Thanks for being here, guys. If you like the content that I produce, like, subscribe, share with your friends. There's always room for more art in your life. Alright, All right, ladies and gents, let's hop right into it. So for this piece, oh, I was so excited to do this piece when I was sketching it. I knew that the background specifically was going to be really difficult. And it was probably the detail in this piece that took me the longest. It was really tedious and lettering really just is not my forte. But this has definitely given me given me a new um, admiration for people who can do font really nice. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's a skill that I think uh, artists should possess, so I'm probably going to do more background similar to it again, but it was, uh, it just took a really long time. But I'm really happy that I did it because honestly, the background is one of my favorite elements in this piece, hands down. Um, and you guys will see that I do cut some of the background out just because it took me so long. It took me hours and hours to do just that um, first background layer. So I did um, hop around a little bit, um, as you will see in a couple minutes, but yeah. But um, the main reason why I chose to do the background the way that I did was um, there's, there's some symbolism in here. So let me just talk about that real quick. Um, I wanted to do um, bigger numbers, like circling the globe, like it was the face of a clock, which I think reads pretty well. Um, but I chose Roman, ru uh, Roman numerals, sorry, um, specifically because I feel like they just looked very um, like stark and compositionally. I think they worked really well. I um, did a couple sketches with regular lettering and I just fell in love with the Roman numerals so that's what I decided to do. And I feel like it just makes it stand out from all of the numbers in the background. Um, and I chose to do those ones in normal lettering just because doing Roman numerals all over the place would have kind of either A defeated the point of doing them around the center of the globe and B um, I, it just would have taken me way too long to do. It would have been really difficult to get all those tiny little like X's and lines and I think they will all would have like really mushed together and I honestly don't know all of the Roman numerals so um you know I would have had to educate myself which would have also taken a little bit more time not that I wasn't willing to do that but it just wasn't the right design choice anyways so I didn't bother um and I did zoom in and zoom out throughout this background process. Let me know if you, you guys like that. Um, I feel like it's just nicer to get different angles of the artwork, but I also feel like moving the camera around too much is kind of like jarring when you're watching the video. So if you have any, any opinions on that, <laughs> please let me know. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Um, but yeah, it was um, really tiring for my hand to do all these little letters, but I think it came out looking really nice. It looked specifically like exactly how I had it in my head, so that was really nice because normally when I picture how things look in my head, it <laughs> doesn't look that way, so it was nice to really see this come together. Um, but yeah, I... I guess I'll talk a little bit next about um, some of the other symbols that I put into this piece because this is just chocked full of them and in my last video I feel like I didn't spend enough time talking about what the piece actually meant so that's what I'm going to try and do here. Um, now if you have been following my work on Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, or um, 
DeviantArt, <laughs> you have probably seen that I've done this style of sun before. I really like it. I've been using it in all of the Alice in Wonderland um, project pieces that have like the sun directly in it. I um, I used it in the Red Queen piece. I like having a cold sun. I think it's really um, interesting and dynamic, and it's really like thought provoking. And I really like this for this project specifically because um, there is a quote by Alice, um, I, I can't remember specifically how it goes, but it's along the lines of, if I had a world all of my own, everything would be as it wasn't, and nothing would be as it is. And I thought doing a reversed sun that wasn't spiky and was kind of like slimy and was blue and green instead of like red and yellow and orange was just kind of like funny and and like really um fun it was fun to draw on all of them i think it's a really nice thing to tie everything together and it is one of the aspects of this piece that ties it to everything else in the collection just because i feel like this piece um stands very strongly on its own which is good but it um it made me nervous because I didn't know if it was going to fit in with everything else that I am putting into the book. So, um, But you can see here that I am just starting to go over um, those background numbers just to push them farther back. And I feel like when I started doing this, I was like, oh shoot, Like I spent all this time doing these numbers and now I'm going to like cover them up and fade them. But... It's really what I wanted to do. I was struggling with the color choice on this, so let me know what you guys think if I if I chose good colors. I think it looks good in the end, but I was thinking about doing blue and then yellow and red. But I feel like these just kind of blended more effortlessly into one another. And I like how you almost get like a wobbling effect from it cuz the numbers near the globe are so light and then the numbers near the figure are darker and then they get lighter and warmer up at the top of the page. So I think that gave it an interesting um, field of depth, but I'll have to play with that a little bit more. I would have liked that to be a little bit of a smoother gradient. If I had done dark blue and then purple at the top, I think that would have looked good, but it wouldn't have really deepened and pulled forward the spots that I wanted to be deepened and pulled forward, so uh, let me know what you guys think of that too. I, <laughs> I love input on my work. So here you can see I'm going into the globe. I wish I had actually zoomed in for this part of the video because it's just so nice to watch up close, but the globe is hands down my favorite part of this piece. I feel like the blending my markers were really just like gelling with me that day. <laughs> they really were. They were just like, Emma, I love you. And I was like, thanks, guys. I love you, too. So, yes, I talked to my art supplies. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I feel like the way that these blended, it was like so effortless. <laughs> and normally I really struggle with it. So that's good. That is a sign of growth. I, um, I chose the colors in the globe specifically. Um, because I wanted it to be like that focal point, that bright like impact point of the piece, and then you would lead up into the character and like the mm -hmm. the rope like structures that he is like blurring into. So I chose to do red into yellow because this was the ground color for all of my other pieces, and um. I feel like having that in the place where the water is on the earth is, again, just playing off of that quote where everything is reversed, and I think that's kind of fun. Um, and then I did actually choose to do the land pieces in the colors that I made, the walls in the lobby piece, and the water in um, the second Red Queen piece. So I think that... The, the tie to the original um, storyline was there really nicely, um, but it was it was a little bit more subtle. It wasn't like Alice. And honestly, sketching this globe, I had no idea what the colors were going to be. I was planning on making it um, 
all blue and green um and then just doing doing the blue where the water would be and the green where the land would be and it would almost be like he is the connection between wonderland and the actual world but i felt like quoting the the actual um movie was just a little bit more like impactful visually and um i did really struggle with the colors of the land and the gradation because i thought it was going to be like a really good idea to do the um the yellow right on the rim like it was like peeking around through the space but well, as soon as I put that yellow down, I got scared because I was like, oh, there's so much yellow in this globe right now. Like, it's going to be way too bright, and I was just afraid that I wouldn't have enough contrast. But really, it did. Um, I, I put the blues and the greens in there, and it wasn't a problem. And as you can see, I, I did shade those Roman, Roman numerals. I was really debating on doing that just because... I was afraid that it was going to blend too much into the background because I shaded them with green. I, I didn't want to shade them with orange just because, I don't know, I felt like that was too normal. <laughs> so I wanted to shade them with green. Um, and I was, it, it made me nervous because I was afraid that I was going to make those lines too thin. But I just was super steady and delicate with my hand. And I think they came out good. I think shading them was the right choice. Because I think if I didn't shade them, they would have looked super flat. So, yeah. Let me know if you guys think if that was a good decision. I was nervous because I wanted them to be very stark and, and like, stand off the page. But I think shading that really helped them stand up on their own a little bit more, too. So, yeah. And I, um, you'll see when I'm doing the globe here that I am making the edges, um, like, kind of like, <laughs> I don't even know, like, almost like fro-like, if you've ever done pop art, I feel like that's the texture that I was going for, um, I don't really know why, I just felt like that was <laughs> the appropriate texture to make continents, <laughs> but I think it looks good, um, it, it reads well, and I, I do regret putting that super dark blue down, at least as far up on the land masses as I did, because that when I layered that light blue on top of the green, it just looked so nice. It really did. And then I was just like, darker, <laughs> darker, deeper, you know? And it just, I feel like I pushed it a little bit too far, but I, I don't know, that, that outline of the dark blue that I did, I felt like, was a little bit too stark against the lighter blue that I layered with the green and the yellow, so I, I felt like I needed to fix that. But if I hadn't done that outline, I probably would have just left it with the lighter blue. And here, you can see, I, I've gone into the figure. Um, doing this figure was... <laughs> kind of insane honestly I wanted to give him like almost a like shiny like almost fluid metal kind of texture if that makes sense um which I think I did decently well um I just really had to focus on the planes of the body which was difficult with the lighting that I did upward but I think it worked out really well I think I think I actually executed that okay, um, but it was it was making me really nervous doing this the whole time. I was being very sparing with my dark colors, and I was, I basically decided to go in with olive, where I knew the highlights were already going to hit the brightest, where I would need that yellow, and then I went in with my darkest colors, where I knew there was not going to be any light, it was just going to be like whatever was reflected off of the the space you know so I was just really trying to block in my colors get my values down so that it would read really clear especially with this silhouette that I chose which is why I chose such a dynamic pose because um, I really wanted it to have this forward momentum because time is always moving forward you know so I um that's, that's why I put the lines in there, too. I wanted it to almost be like rope, like he was like pulling the earth forward through time. 
but I didn't want something as like, I guess industrial looking as um, him pulling a rope, but I think it turned out well. Um, I think the pose that I chose was good. It, it makes it feel like he is connected to the earth and he is kind of just like floating through like time. That's that's what I how I meant for it to read at least. I hope that's seen. Um, and doing doing these textures for the lines was something I was scared of, which is why you see me going in um, and just doing the figure first because I, I did really want to nail that figure because his silhouette had to be good, especially since I chose more greens and yellows. Um, if I had chosen maybe um, like a different color, if I had chosen different colors for the background and then made him purple and like pink, that would have really like made him stand out, but I, I wanted him to be almost a secondary read. I wanted the globe to be the very first thing that you looked at when you saw the piece, and then you'd kind of look out and be led into the figure and then through the numbers. So that's all part of just um, planning the composition. But I, um, I wanted to make these lines look like he was almost like glitching into the 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 ropes themselves like he was like a part of them and he was like absorbed in and reading through all of time so i um i really tried to make them that same like metallic -y liquid texture that i went for in the figure um just because i I was going through a couple different ideas in my head if I could make them like stark like almost like a um like a computer glitch or if I could make them like a little bit more flowing like waves or you know I went through a whole bunch of different processes with this and I really just landed on this idea because I felt like there wasn't going to be a huge disconnect between the figure and the lines in the the foreground so i i tried to show different line deepnesses as well as um you know like different sized lines and i tried to really do this by putting a lot of dimension in the figure and that's also why i chose a side profile because when i was sketching this i was originally thinking that it would be from from behind the um the figure that you would be looking almost down at his back as his arms were were pointing closer to you and i liked that idea but i felt like it if i wanted to do lines or any kind of extra design elements to push that forward motion that it wouldn't be as impactful and i'm sure i could have come up with a couple different designs, but I landed on this one and I just really fell in love with it. Um, and I chose to do green actually because I feel like green is like, I don't know why people associate certain colors with certain things, but green is just a color that I associate with time. Um, green and like blue, so maybe like a teal would have been nice, but I didn't have like a teal marker, so. but. Yeah, let me know if that's something that you can relate to, because I feel like everybody always says, like, the folders for school, like, red is reading, and, like, blue is math or something, and, <laughs> and yellow is history, but I don't know. I think everybody has slightly different variations of that, but I personally associate the color green with time, so I <laughs> decided to make him green. I was thinking about making him purple, like I said, but I feel like there was going to be that disconnect, so. Um, now doing the face, I think the face turned out okay. I really like the face, but I feel like there is more that I could have done. I feel like I could have pushed it a little bit further and made it a little bit more detailed, but with the texture that I wanted it to be and like that motion that I wanted to go for, I feel like if I had made it more detailed, it would have kind of lost that that forward sucking into like thought motion 
So, I don't know. Let me know if you guys think I did that well. And if you like what I make, then like, subscribe. I am also on Instagram at painting.portal. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next Monday.